What's up, Silver Stackers? Thank you so much for being here. This is Silver Slayer. Junk Silver is hands down the most underrated type of silver out there. Some could argue it's actually the best type of silver to stack for various reasons we're going to go over in this video. I'd like to pass the question to you. Do you buy Junk Silver? Do you not buy Junk Silver and why? I'd love for you all to participate in the comment section, give some good opinions out there. I'll share my opinion on Junk Silver later on. But first things first, I want to share the formula to show how much actual silver is in your junk in terms of face value. I want to share this right in the beginning because I'm sure a lot of you won't watch through the entire video and I want everyone to know this formula because it is the most important formula, the important thing to know when you are stacking junk silver is how much actual silver is inside. So this is the formula. You go by face value. So let's say you go to your local coin shop and you want to buy $10 worth of junk silver, right? That would be 20 half dollars. So you want to know if you're getting a good deal or not. Well, what you can do, and this is what you need to do actually, is do face value times 0.715. And that will tell you how much, how many ounces at least of, our, of actual silvers inside $10 face. And then you can use that amount of silver to spot price and see if you're getting a good deal. Now, it's not going to be sold at exactly spot you know, a little higher, but regardless, at least you get an idea of, you know, if you were going to buy $10 face of junk compared to just 10 um, eagles or a 10 ounce bar. You get what I'm saying? So let, let's do the, that equation. So 10 times 0.715. So in $10 face, it, you get 7.15 troy ounces of silver. And then you could look at hey, is 7 ounces of silver sold for whatever they're pricing $10 face, is that worth it, or is it not? A lot of people will try to rip you off, a lot of people will try to overprice, especially on eBay, so using that equation is very important. So let's say you wanted to possibly buy $50 face of junk, are you getting a good deal? Well, you do 50 times 0.715, and that means it's 35.75 ounces. So you can compare 35 ounces to 35 ounces of actual silver and then use spot price and see what's the better deal. Now, even if 35 ounces of actual silver is, you know, might be cheaper, you still might want to go with junk. Now, this is by far the best article that I found online talking about junk silver, the ins and the outs. Uh, it's very very important to understand the benefits because the benefits outweigh the other, you know, there's so many more pros to junk silver than cons compared to any other type of silver out there. Um, one, the most important is that it's fractional. It's fractional, meaning it's sold in or it has, it's, you know, it comes in less denomination than a one ounce coin or one ounce round. So if you're going to trade or barter with someone for something that's less than an ounce of silver, are you going to take a chainsaw to your one ounce coin? And, and you know, because let's say you are trading or bartering and let's say silver is a lot more valuable in that day and age, but all you have are one ounce coins you would have to take a chainsaw and cut it in a half or a fourth kind of like how we use change today if you want to get you know a stick of gum but all you have are dollar bills hey you can get 75 cents from three quarters or whatever that's how junk silver or one of the reasons why it's so beneficial um, two it's government backed a lot of rounds that are sold in fractionals are very very overpriced because they still have to stamp and die those rounds so junk silver is a cheaper way to go fractional but it's also government backed instead of some private mint that no one heard of and in terms of trading or bartering that's very important for your potential trader to know or recognize the coin they'll understand and recognize a walking liberty half dollar a mercury dime they might not know about sunshine mint or volcambi or something and that might make them skeptical if it's real or not that's another reason three 
which is also a very, very important reason, is they don't make it anymore. Pre-1965 means your Mercury Dimes, your Barber Quarters, your Barber Dimes, all these things are being less and less used in circulation because people are picking them out and keeping them, meaning they almost will start to grow in numismatic value. And if you want a prime example of how that could happen, look at Morgan's. Morgan's stopped being produced in 1921, and Morgan's are starting to grow almost to numismatic value, and Morgan's have a 40-year jump on junk silver, um, and in, you know, or, or a 20-year jump, sorry, on junk silver. Or no, yeah, 40 years. Sorry, I'm doing a uh, 40-year jump on junk silver. So then you could see, you know, in 40 years from now, junk silver will almost be like Morgan's because they'll be so scarce. So you can almost get, you know, some very cheap silver with some very, very good benefits that if you have at least some coins in good condition could skyrocket in price. You know, uh, it, it really is something to think about in that manner, which I don't think a lot of people do. Now, I also uh, wanted to bring this point up because um, some of you are following this story that I'm covering about the lady from Texas, a billionaire, that bought $50 million worth of silver, which is 900,000 silver eagles, and she actually plans on uh, placing billions of dollars of orders, and it's covered from Miles Franklin. Andy Sheckman, CEO, is the one that's kind of covering this whole story. He's actually coming on my channel to talk about the order, and by the way, we're trying to just figure out a day that we both, you know, can, can link together at the same time. You got to remember, he's a very, very busy person. I'm a very, very busy person as a single father, you know, that has my daughter, you know, four days out of the week, and then those other days, you know, if he's not available because he has something, but then, you know, because he was available, but that was the day I had my daughter in the morning, so I couldn't, and then the time I'm available, he was in Boca speaking, I mean, we're, we're just trying to figure out a date, but it should be very soon for him to come on and talk about that, that, that order, but regardless, I just want to share that update with you guys, but regardless, she spent, she spent a couple hundred thousand dollars on junk silver. Well, at least a hundred thousand because the order was over a million dollars and, um, or, or sorry, <laughs> she bought over a million ounces, 900,000 were in Eagles. And then the rest was in constitutional silver and gold. So at least a hundred thousand ounces of junk silver. That's a lot. That's a lot of junk silver, which is now taken out of circulation, right? meaning there's even less. And this lady's smart because she went with eagles, which are growing premiums, and she also went into junk silver, which is undervalued that a lot of people um, still aren't hip with. And she put some into gold, which I was, before I knew that, I was telling, you know, I, when, when I first heard the story when it broke, I was saying, if you're putting that much money into silver, you definitely need to also be putting money into gold for obvious reasons. You know, you could fit $100,000 of silver in a shoebox. You can't do that with gold. Um, and she did, right? So anyways, um, uh, I just wanted to give that little, uh, that little inside scoop. In my opinion, I love junk silver. Mercury dimes and Walking Liberty half dollars are my favorite. Barbers are pretty nice too, but I don't know why. Maybe just because those were my two first types of junk silver I started stacking, so it's sentimental. But anyways, let's jump into this article from Provident Metals, even though I basically just explained everything they're going to. So prior to 1965, American dimes, quarters, and half dollars were coins that were circulated through the U.S. market. Were 90% silver. And by the way, uh, you know, a Mercury dime had 10 cents of silver inside of it. Walking Liberty had 50 cents of silver inside of it. You know, so while the majority of the composition might be precious metal, they are unfortunately considered to have no numismatic value, uh, meaning that they have no value to a coin collector. It is for this reason that we often hear these pre-1965 uh, quarters or silver coins referred to as junk silver. Now, right now, they aren't towards collectors, but imagine, you know, like Morgan's in 40 years from now when there's none in circulation, you're never going to come across, uh, you know, a, um, a Mercury Dime or anything, a Walking Liberty or anything, um, just, you know, from your local gas station or anything. I mean, these coins are going to be extremely scarce in a couple decades, which I do think will grow numismatic value. I, I definitely, I can almost say that confidently, since there's already, you know, X amount in circulation, and every year, 
it, they're, you know, it's coming slim pickings and that low supply, high demand. So anyways, yet while these coins are considered to have no numismatic value yet, they didn't say that, but it should be yet. For coin collectors, they are extremely valuable to investors as they are bought and sold in bulk due to the value of their silver content. And these are this is the perfect type of silver for like um, like the SHTF survivalists and people who do think we'll be trading or bartering um, someday. So that's definitely uh, what people should go off of uh, if you are trading or bartering. So when first minted pre-1965, a face bag, a bag with a net value of $1,000 of these 90% silver coins would contain a net worth of 723 ounce, uh, ounces of silver. Over time, the natural wear that would occur... Um, and these coins throughout their circulation would diminish, and then the, met, the net mass of silver is considered to be contained with the face bag decreasing to the equivalent net of 715 ounces. Hmm, isn't that interesting? Going back to my calculation, face value times 0.715, and that's how you determine in one ounce how much actual silver is in there. So if you do 10 ounces times 0.715, you'll see how many ounces of silver is in $10 face in 20 walking liberties. Or, you know, um, 10 walking liberties, a couple mercury dimes, a barber, whatever, that adds up to $10, whatever adds up to $10, multiply that times 0.715, or any, even it's $80 or whatever, however much face value, however much all of the change adds up to, as it would even today, you know, 50 cents, whatever, there's 25, 30, 30 or, you know, whatever, times 0.715, and I'll show you how much actual silver's in there, and then you can see if you're getting a good deal or not. Because these junk silver coins are no longer in circulation, the approximate net of silver found in the face bag, 715 ounces, is the standard mass price ratio used to measure the equivalent silver to spot price. This means that when silver spot price increases by one cent, the value of the bag of silver coins increases by $7.15. Furthermore, if the silver spot price increased by $0.10, cents, the value of the bag would it then increase by $71. See, they shouldn't, they shouldn't compare it to that because a lot of people don't know, you know, what is a face bag, right? Just do it how I was explaining it, you know? Face value times 0.715. No reason to, to do all this stuff that a lot of people don't even know, you know, or with a thousand dollars worth of net value. I mean, just make it simple. That's why I'm here to kind of share some of my my two cents on things like this. Especially since a lot of people aren't going to buy a thousand dollars of a fa of a face bag. Most people are going to buy, you know, ten dollars face from the local coin shop or twenty dollars face. So, you know, it's a lot more um, convenient and, I guess comprehensible to tell someone, hey, if you're going to go buy $5 a face, multiply that times 0.715 and you'll see how much silver's in there. So anyways, following the end of their minting in the mid-1960s, it's become legal in the U.S. to melt down junk silver coins. People in possession of junk silver often melt it down so they can turn their coins into silver bulk, which can then either be resold or repurposed into silver mass. I don't think that's a good idea. Especially given, you know, the fractional aspect and the aspect that it's not in circulation anymore. You know, it's becoming a piece of American history. I think that's a terrible idea. So anyways, the value of this of junk silver comes from the fact that there has no longer been any 90% silver U.S. coins minted since 1965, meaning there's a finite amount of these junk silver coins. For this reason, the value of these numismatical worthless coins is quite high on the market. He even explained it, numismatical worthless coins. And imagine over time, they will become more numismatical. I don't know why. I mean, come on. Like, even th they just contradicted themselves. Um... But also, if you're coin roll hunting, like you'll see some channels that will buy. I think Silver Seeker used to do this a lot. I don't know if he still does, but he would buy like you know, a hundred rolls of like of of half dollars or something, and he would just open them, and instantly you can see if there's any constitutional silver in there. Now, ninety percent of the time, probably even higher, there's not. But if you buy a hundred rolls. There's a, there's a slight chance that you might get you might get a walking liberty in there or something you know or a barber half a dollar, um, so that's what coin roll hunters do. They'll go to the bank and say, hey, can I get a hundred rolls of you know whatever, and um, it's pretty fun to do actually. Some channels that's like that's 
what their channel basically consists of, and it's pretty fun to watch. So anyways, the value of junk silver has changed little since the late 1960s, um, but it has gone through its passages of increased spot prices, melting, and selling. And that's another point I want to stop at, is as all silver is gaining premiums, it's only obvious that junk silver is as well, but compared to the reason silver is getting prem or gaining premiums, I still think junk silver gaining the same amount of premium as a as um like a Britannia or even like a generic round. I think there's more benefit, there's more opportunity for junk silver to gain higher premiums than a generic round would just from the low supply of silver or the supply deficit right now. Um, so over the last few decades, junk, junk metals have seen notable premiums that have exceeded the value of over 20% over silver spot price. 20%, but we've seen American Eagles up to 71% premiums as of um, earlier this year. But there has been one time in particular where spot price of junk silver genuinely exploded. The time that most affected the spot price of junk silver was around the Y2K situation. Conspiracy scare, which people believe the world's computers would crash upon entrance in the 21st century, leading to the downfall of modern civilization as we know it. Due to these conspiracy fears, people began investing in the junk silver in case digital banking and monetary systems crash altogether. Between 1998 and 1999, the increased purchases of junk silver increased the price bags of junk silver up to $50 an ounce, whereas the price of newly produced silver hardly changed. While junk silver spot price might have fallen since the time of Y2K, this example from recent history showed how easily the premiums of junk silver can shift during times of economic stagnation. Investing in junk silver can be a smart idea for this very reason, but it depends on the need of each person. Why junk silver is useless to coin collectors. I don't even want to go over this. I mean, I already know what they're going to say, right? But there's still coin collectors, obviously, they're into very, you know, specific types of coins that, you know, where, where quality definitely matters. But I don't know. I mean, obviously, the, the, the junk silver is not going to be a numismatic coin in, you know, in the same terms as, you know, most coins. But I do think as it become more scarce, this will make them more collectible, right? There will be more collectible. Collectors, collectible. I mean, they obviously will. Imagine in in 50 years from now, how collectible a mercury dime made in 1935 would be. How is that not an opportunity to make that coin a lot, you know, that coin definitely could. I mean, I don't know why they won't at least even acknowledge that. So um, anyways, one of the main questions people tend to have when searching for junk silver is to question whether or not the coins are in your possession. Dimes, quarters, half dollars, actually junk silver or not. One of the easiest ways to determine this is by looking at the edge of the coin, and that's what coin roll hunters do. They don't even have to open, you know, when they open, when they put the coins in the roll, they just hold like their middle finger and their thumb, and they literally, within two seconds of looking at it, will know if there's any silver in there, and if not, they'll just dump it into a bucket and open the next one. So like literally, second, you know, well, like in one minute, they could search through two or three rolls, and they'll just do that for an hour or so. And then put the the whatever amount of or if they found any coins aside and yeah so and then what they'll do is then they'll take all those quarters that um, that weren't which is probably like ninety five percent or half dollars that weren't um, junk silver then they could roll them back up and take them back to the bank so you're almost just like you know just skimming through the bank's circulating supply of of coins and just trying to piece out all the silver and a lot of people do that and even why they're becoming more scarce but when you have a lady spend a hundred thousand of dollars up to at least of junk silver that definitely put a dent in the amount out there especially since you know they also mentioned that a lot of people are melting it down making it even more scarce so if you've ever held on to a quarter or dime one has seen a lot of circulation and accumulated a fair amount of wear. You'll notice that its edge has become brown. If the coins in your possession have this characteristic, it means the coin primarily consists of copper, not silver. And yeah, it's instant when you look at a roll. It's instant what is silver and what isn't. Um, another way is though, like, there's so many ways to determine if coins silver. I have a rare earth magnet that my moderator gave me. It's very easy. I, I could do anything with that. But if you buy your 
silver from, you know, legitimate places like Bullion Max or your local coin shop. You never got to worry about that stuff. However, if you're an older coin whose edges are still silver, even following a great deal of wear throughout its time and circulation, this means you are in possession of junk silver coin. There's also like key dates and stuff too, though, which is pretty cool um, for coin collectors or anyone. Um, but anyways, and this is kind of what I was saying, limited risk with notable gains, right? I mean, you're buying silver and there's more notable gains than a generic round, you know, like, like there's so much opportunity here. They also say um, low premium at face value, ownership of your investment, planning ahead for the worst, right? A lot of people for the SHTF type are going to get into junk silver. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, I covered most of the stuff this article was going to say, but I still do like looking at their points and kind of branching off and throwing my opinions out there, which you could also do my opinions on this video in the comment section as long as they're respectful so yeah i'm gonna wrap this video up here go check out the video i made earlier today it's definitely a good one i got a lot of stuff coming so stay tuned thanks for tuning in this was silver slayer i'll see you guys soon peace